Hey everyone, tonight I'm here with my husband Red. Here he is. And if you guys can see here, we are going to be showing you how to make little sage bundles. Like this. And the things that you're going to need is a tray to catch the fall, this loose stuff right over here. Some twine. We are using just regular old crafting twine, get from Hobby Lobby or Walmart. Some cup to cut off the excess and the reason why we like to keep the excess is because if you dry it out more you can put it in another jar and you can make loose incense with it or use it for rituals or anything else like that and some scissors so as he's going to be rolling it up and things like that I'm going to be kind of walking you guys through and what you guys see here is we have just an assortment of wildflowers um, from Colorado on some private property that we own and this is some wild blue and white sage. Um, so as you can see, he's kind of making even or as even as possible bundles and chunks. And the reason why you're going to want them to be as even as possible is because you're going to want them to burn evenly. Now for the measurements for the strings, what would you recommend, Red? Mm, probably about two and a half feet or so. About two and a half feet of string. Depends on the size of the bundle. How thick you want it. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you even wanted to cut these bundles in half and make, you know, small three to four inch little bundles just for rituals or just for cleansing or smudging, you could too. So, how about you go ahead and walk the audience through what you're doing All right, right now? So, I'm going to put the string underneath the bundle. And you make the two tag ends even length. And we're just going to do that nice little simple knot right here. Do it fairly tight, not too tight, but not too loose. And then we're going to wrap the string evenly around the bundle just to keep it together real nice. Then you get this one up here, and we're going to wrap the other string the opposite way. And you see how it makes like a little X, little crisscross pattern? That's the kind of pattern a lot of sages use and things like that. It's really simple. It really minimizes your string usage, I guess, and it also helps hold the material better together so, it, like I said, it burns evenly. So once you get the two tag ends real small and short right there, you're going to just do another little simple knot and tie them. So there we go. So now all we have to do left is just trim it off. Not too hard. A little more tedious than anything. It was a lot of fun though going on our walk to collect this stuff because like Definitely you know you're in nature and it's quiet and it's private property so we know no one's gonna bother you. It's just you and nature and your loved ones. So it was a lot of fun. It was a pretty good day that day. It was extremely spur of the moment too. Very spur of the moment, yeah. And there we go. Nice little homemade sage bundle. Yep. You got the little nice honeysuckle flowers and the purple ones. You got all the sage. And there's even sprigs of sweet grass in there mm -hmm. too. So, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And he's going to show you guys how to do one more bundle just so um, you guys can really... Grasp it good. Yeah, really see. Because it's kind of hard to see. I'm a little shaky. I'm actually on my iPhone right now. So, I'm a little shaky. But we're just going to walk you guys through one more little bundle. So again, about two and a half, three feet of string. And then the bundle, you want it to be uh, probably about as big around as a quarter, around in width. That's a pretty good thickness. That's, yeah. That would smolder really nice. So you put the string underneath the bundle. And then you bring the two tag ends up and make them even length. And we're going to just make this a nice little simple knot. Just a regular old shoe tying knot? Yeah. Or? Cool. Just good old fashioned simple knot. A simple knot. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we can wrap. It's more of a flick of the wrist than anything, eh? Yeah, definitely <laughs> is. It's kind of a little hard to keep the uh, sage from snapping. 
if you tighten it, if you do it too tight. Yeah, note to self, don't do it too tight because then you will end up breaking some really dry limbs of the sage and then it's not going to burn, it's going to go out on you or it's going to burn weird or run weird, so. And there you guys go. He's just going to tie it off. Just again with another little simple knot. Let me try to get my hands out of the way to, so I can show you. That's pretty easy. Yeah. And let me just trim it off. <clears throat> Note to self, you guys, though, um, sage, a lot of people have a lot of different allergies to sage. Um, so if you are, yes, if you are collecting um, herbs and wildflowers and wild materials like that, just be aware that some of these regular things that you wouldn't think carry allergens actually do for some people. And it is illegal to pick wildflowers in Colorado unless it's on private property. Indeed, yes. Take note so, of the laws. Although Colorado has gorgeous flowers, please gorgeous don't pick plants. Our flowers. Yeah, please don't pick our flowers, you guys. This is private property. My family has owned it for literally over 100 years. Over 100 years so please. Be respectful of the land and always remember to leave a gift for the land when you do harvest, when you do, you know, with withdrawal, I guess, if you will, um, natural elements within nature. It's always nice to repay the favor. So, yeah, and here's just our last little bit of sage. We can make last little bit. And I think I'm going to cut that in half and make two minis. little minis. That'd be cool. So, yeah, here's our little sage bundles. And again, it's really easy, really quick doesn't take long at all and again this is red it's my husband and thanks so much you guys and we, we wish you all lots of light love and blessing and we'll see you next time